I mean, we always knew it would be quick, but yeah, I don't know. Um, this, the thing with the thing with the Citadel expansion, um, in in my mind, my, my personal experience with it is, I I don't think that it's finished yet, um, and I'm I'm really looking forward to Tuesday where we introduce the next lot of structures, and then we give it some time to sit. And, and you guys get used to those, so that we can start looking at the whole system in a much better way. Just because, just one specialized fortress, basically, in space is not enough to be able to consider the full design of, of where we're supposed to be going with these structures. And even, like, straight after putting the second ones in, we've got to get, got to wait for everyone to get used to it and also make sure that everything's working the way that it is. And then we can start looking properly at how this is affecting the ecosystem of EVE. Um, we were talking yesterday at, at great length of many beers about um, just this, there's still so much that we have to work out about what's what's best for vulnerability and, and cap, uh, damage caps and all that kind of those details. But until you've lived in a system and got used to it long enough, I don't think we can truly say that it's ever finished. And there's also a bunch of stuff that we just still need to get in, like insurance. But yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, I mean, I think mo most of the really surprising things for me uh, were stuff that, that it, like we discovered beforehand anyways and decided it was kind of okay to, to allow and just observe like uh, like offshore and all that, but that was like before we, before release that, that got brought up to us. Um, the, uh, I'd say actually the uptake has been faster than I expected, um, especially the XLs. Um, part of that is uh, the, uh, the tie-dye and um, uh, online interactions, uh, but I would not have expected this many to keep stars up at this point. I would have expected it to take a bit longer and maybe have like one or two uh, ones up at this point. All right, cool, thank you. Hey guys, I'm um, Alan. I'm oh, Pyro. Um, Spiritual Jaconis in the Spaceship Evil. Um, my question relates to the release coming Tuesday. Um, obviously, we'll see changes in, uh, in links, particularly off grid links, which I'm not in the slightest bit salty about. Um, <laughs> only because um, I feel personally that this possibly makes it more difficult to do some form of solo PvP, and I know that isn't everybody's bag, but it's definitely one of the uh, things I enjoy um, an awful lot of game many years ago when I started. Um, with the recent changes to you know, carriers and how the fight systems worked, you saw a huge, at least I did, uh, influx in like people just derping Thanatos and stuff on gates, just solo PvP. So I think it's definitely um, people who are interested, but I think changes like that maybe make it more difficult in small ships, like our ships or whatever. Um, so I don't know if that's something you are looking at or I mean obviously aware of, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I'd say we're always interested in looking for ways to allow skilled pilots to set themselves away from the pack. Uh, one of the challenges with offering links is it was actually never really a skill thing. It was a preparation thing. And uh, preparation-based advantages for solo pilots only last a certain amount of time before the, the non-solo people all pick them up as well. Um, so that I think was the, probably that the, they served that purpose really well uh, for like two years, and then they've had like five, six years of not serving that purpose all that well. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we'd always like to, but we, the way we'd like to approach uh, improving options for solo players is through more, more skill-based gameplay, more things to master that you can master better than the blob, uh, rather than, uh, having to bring them all around. Yeah, no, 
uh, for sure. I mean, um, I mean things like the um, armor raping um, uh, implants would certainly help and things like that. But, um, but yeah, it's just sort of, as you say, trying to get the balance between how it's going to be useful in, in both scenarios. Anyway, thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, hi, I'm Carmen Nobel from Probably Block, and my question for both of you is uh, if you could go back in time and change one thing you did during your career at CCP, <laughs> what would that be? <laughs> What if it were five things? <laughs> yeah, let's make it interesting. Yeah, exactly. I remind you, take three better ships. <laughs> All your mistakes. Jump fatigue. Default. Actually, I'm pretty happy with working with unit interceptors, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so one that, one that comes to mind, and there's, I think it's hard to come up with, um, you can always find tons of them, right? Um, it's hard to come up with just one. Um, but one that is going to be definitely people's mind anyways. I think with, uh, with the, uh, the Age of Saw release, um, we definitely uh, underestimated the, the change in viscerality uh, with the, uh, the moving uh, the mechanic to a, um, uh, to a sort of electronic hacking based. Uh, from from shooting guns. Uh, if I could have done, obviously there's a bunch of stuff that we could have done differently with that system, but it would be interesting. I've always found it fascinating to wonder what would happen if we just made the animation be this long. Um, but that kind of thing, where we, I think we underestimated um, how big of a difference that would have. Because um, the, at the core game design level, uh, very abstracted, um, the, the goal of a shooting system and a hacking system is the same thing. It's just to get people onto a grid where they're vulnerable. Um, and then, then players will do the rest by interacting with each other. And that's the whole point of the system, is just to force you to be on a grid uh, when you might not want to be. Um, so that then there can be a fight. But uh, the, the dressing around it is something that we definitely didn't put enough attention into. The, the rest of the, the in-universe, the, the, um, uh, the immersion, immersiveness of it. I was just going to tell a funny story about the silly mistake I made when I was a GM. And uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I was new um, and I didn't read a flag on something and so I ended up delivering somebody's titans inside somebody else's site, inside a station, somewhere they shouldn't have been. It took me a really long time to fix that, but it was okay. But I made sure I didn't. Sorry, what? It sounds like we're too far. Get at once. It's such a nice vision. Don't make her feel bad. It's fine. I fixed it. It just it just took me half a day of the end of the day. I'm trying to get that all sorted. But I was I was probably about three days old, I guess, as a GM, so they were watching everything I did. It all went in the right place, I think, but yeah. That's not as bad as I expected, so thank you very much. <laughs> System and then they say the game goes potato or they have sty So, what needs to be done, or what, how can we make that real time? So, what should be done there? Is it something that you can just do with the components today? It's a matter of money, or it's something that you are waiting for a new technology? Um, so, it's definitely not something that can be done with just upgrading the components. Um, the uh, there's, there's just limitations in, in technology for having that many people uh, fighting at once. What's often the bottleneck for these kind of really big fights is the communicating the information to each client uh, and organizing what, what communication to send to each client because uh, that, that scales really badly as numbers increase. 
Uh, it, it just kind of has to. Right? There isn't really any way around that, unfortunately, other than trusting the client, I guess, but that would be really bad. Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Um, so I'd say there isn't really a solution to it. I don't think we'll ever remove, Tide will never go away because Tide is a mitigating factor. It's a, it's a system for allowing overload to happen more smoothly. And the, the source of the overload is just the fact that we've got a video game where a whole bunch of people can be in one place at once. Um, most other games solve that by not allowing that to happen. Um, and I don't think we can really make that kind of, like, we'd, ne we'd never instance people off when they get over a certain number, which would be the, the standard way of dealing with it. Um, we, we're always upgrading the hardware. We're always improving load. Um, one cool thing is that we're getting a bit of a performance boost in uh, Ascension from the removal of the old fleet boost system. Uh, for large fleets, when you're jumping or docking undocking, you're going to notice a uh, less performance loss from those activities. Um, so we're always working on improving it, but um, at the same time, you guys are always working on a bigger fight. Um, <laughs> and we're never going to win that race. <laughs> It would be interesting. I think the problem with, with doing it with that hacking mini game is that some people are just so good at it that they would kind of wreck people all the time. Um, <coughs> I think we and we'd also need to be able to communicate with people and have a defense, I guess, because it might feel bad if you um, if you're getting uh, you're getting hit by this and you don't really see the progress that your opponent's making. You don't really feel you have a way of interacting. So it would have to be like a two-person hacking game. So I'd say the, the, the short answer is potentially, but it would have to be a very different hacking game than right now, I think, because it would need to have some kind of multiplayer aspect with the, with the ability to actively defend and a feeling of agency for both sides. Um, but it'd be interesting. I think it would be really cool to expand the hacking system. There was plans to, obviously. Um, the team who put it together uh, had some really cool stuff that they were thinking about, but then we lost some people to uh, maternity leave and, uh, it sort of got a bit derailed, um, and uh, like one of the cool things that I always really loved was one, one of the things they had up their sleeve was they wanted to make the hacking mini game give you the option of doing it entirely in the command line. <laughs> so you can use the visual, or you can actually like they just give you a command line interface and some uh, set of commands, uh, and uh, if you can type fast enough, that would just be the fastest way of doing it. Uh, which would uh, make you feel very like 90s movie hacker. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, they, they, they're in the mainframe kind of thing. Um, but uh, I don't know when we, like, I can't promise anything. But that would be really, I'd love to see that kind of thing happen someday. Thank you. Yeah, um, I wanted to ask about how you feel about um, Isaac incursions and the risk reward. A relationship that's there, which I personally will think it's uh, fundamentally broken in comparison to Dolsek and Dolsek. Yeah, um, so uh, it's a good question. It's something that obviously comes up a lot. Um, it, we see this, we see these kind of questions a lot. It's almost always kind of cyclical. Yeah. Like so, the the Nullsec people say that the high sec incursions are broken. The high sec incursion people say the wormholes are broken. The wormholes people say that all the sec's broken. <laughs> um, the uh, it's there's a lot of ways to make Iskin Eve. Um, and there's a lot of balancing factors for it. Um, and risk isn't the only one. Um, uh, expertise needed, investment needed, organization needed, needing to be in a group. Um, just hard limits on the number of them. But those are all things that apply more to high second versions while risk applies less. Um, so I wouldn't, I don't think that they necessarily have to be considered out of whack just because uh, the risk is lower, because there are other factors involved. Um, we definitely need to always keep an eye on them, um, but and especially if they ever start to grow to the point where they become a, um, an actual threat to the economy, but they're nowhere near that now, and they actually, it would be very hard for them to get to that point because of the fact that there's only so many incursions in space at once. Um, but we're always interested in kind of making tweaks. What, we, what we've actually been making tweaks towards more recently is uh, providing some more options for the low-second, null-second incursions. 
um, which does a couple of things. It, it means that there's some more options for variety for running in, in higher risk areas for people that want to move to a higher risk. Um, and then also means that those people can kind of help uh, keep the, the value of the Concord LP from getting to it. So all of that, those kind of feed into each other. So at the moment, we've been mostly making movements towards like allowing capitals in uh, low second, null second conversions, that kind of thing. Um, I, we don't have any current plans to notify. Hmm. Hi, I'm Lady Fox from Flying with um, Pandemic Legions. Um, over the years, I accumulated quite some stuff. Um, between my three characters, according to Evemo, I got one Titan. Because everything's in citadels. Um, it seems that the API only lists stuff from stations and not citadels. Is that something that is being addressed? It's, yeah, it's something we we're, we're definitely have on our list. Um, so we're making progress. Uh, there is one thing that you're not from, if, you, if people don't know, um, as of Tuesday, the in-game search will now work in Citadels and Engineering Complexes. Hmm. So we're no longer... <laughs> so that, was, that was a bit of a technical hurdle. Um, at the initial release, that couldn't, be, that couldn't have been done because of performance reasons, and uh, some of our engineers figured out a way to get it working. Um, and this is another case where it's just a case of we need we had to throw some more engineer time at it, um, but it, I'm pretty sure it'll happen. Um, the API team has been kind of focused on the, uh, the new ESI uh, API, getting that all ready to go for the mobile app, um, but they're going to be uh, getting a bit more free time and we're, we're working on kind of working with them to get more, more upwell structure stuff into the APIs, which is especially important as people shift to doing industry in both citadels and industrial uh, or engineering complexes. My name is Shaka SGG from the Corp Shiva from Ubi Siding and MC Dot. Um, you talked about how you like mechanics that set the solo player a little bit <coughs> apart from the blob and maybe make him able to outplay the blob. Um, I think the stand script mechanic of Tech 3 Destroyers is some mechanic that achieves this. And uh, I want to hear from you um, what do you think did this mechanic, uh, how did this mechanic work out? And also can we maybe expect to see it at, uh, in other ship classes, maybe bigger ships, or maybe even tied to a module? Yep, so I completely agree that it actually has a lot of, both, both a lot of potential, but also actually has done a lot of good so far in allowing uh, a kind of a, another level of interaction you can do with your ship to uh, provide some extra mastery, uh, to allow a higher skill cap for a ship. Um, the places where it's fallen short, I think, have mostly not been related to these, at the stand switching themselves, but to just the rest of the ship. Um, in some cases, the, if the ship is just too strong, then you don't feel the need to stand switch enough. Uh, one of the things we've been we're doing with the release on Tuesday with Ascension is we're actually trying to tease out more reasons to switch um, in more situations. So we're actually um, giving part of the DPS bonus of the ship into the sharpshooter mode, so that if you do just sit in um, defensive mode uh, or speed mode, you're going to actually have less DPS. So you can get more incentive to use that switching, and the more people are, the more you want to switch, the more uh, value you get out of being a high skilled pilot. And I think the making those decisions of when to switch, of when you can sacrifice the 10 second timer and not get a switch back. Um, and so that, that's, we want to keep doing that kind of thing with those ships, and we're going to be very interested to see how that works out on Tuesday. Um, and then as for more ships with it, I think I would, I would very much like to see some more stand switching ships someday. Uh, maybe, in a, maybe in a battle cruiser size ship, uh, maybe in a battleship size ship. Um, we have thought about the possibility of doing something with, similar with the strategic cruisers, but at the moment we're leaning towards keeping those into a different kind of flexibility with the customization and just kind of fixing that up rather than replacing it. Um, but it is, it, it is a possibility to ship those as well over, and we'd be interested to hear what people think about that. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd definitely like to see more of them. Hey, Patrice here. Um, my question is about the in-game browser. Um, as, you, as we all know, it's been quite a loss to quite a lot of people that use in-game mapping tools such as Siggy, Pathfinder, or .lat. Um, is there any plans to introduce any in-game applications that will ease that use? rather than the, the in-game browser itself? Not that I'm aware of, um, to be honest. Uh, it, was, it was just in the in-game browser, was just in a, in a place where we had to take it out. Um, but what Team Techco, who 
um, would be working on this. They've mainly been focusing on the ESI at the moment, but it would be something that they would would consider. Um, so, yeah, they're probably the best people to, to have that conversation with. And in a lot of ways, actually, the ESI work is, is moving towards yeah. this anyway. So I, I think it would be it would be less about making new applications in the client um, and more about allowing more applications out of the client. Um, which I know that does that does mean that you like need all tabs, and that is a challenge I know for some people have uh, their setups in ways that that is less great for. Um, but uh, we think that's both a lot safer uh, and better. Like better for us to maintain. It was just impossible for us to assign the resources needed to keep a browser up to date and consider the security concerns. We just, it was just non-sustainable. Um, by the way, as a completely uh, un unrelated to your question, but related to uh, what Mimic just said, uh, the for team formerly known as Team Tetco has renamed themselves to a name that I'm like super angry that I didn't think of uh, to change our team to at some point. They're called now Kimi McTeamface. <laughs> That's Goliath and. Um, oh, there? Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and them, yes. They're just called them. Yeah. Until they change it to something useful. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ragnar Whitebane uh, from the um, Microkind PPP Specialist Goons One Federation. <laughs> 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 I'm just wondering if in, in the overall game design is any scope left for a play playable faction or whether we've super dumbstered the joke. I mean, I think there's definitely... Like, we, I won't rule it out, is what I definitely say. Um, we don't have a, a plan to do it right now. I wouldn't necessarily say there would have to be Jove if we did it. There's a lot of other options as well. Um, we've sort of written Talacan into like Jove, but, but more. So we probably wouldn't want to use them either, because they're kind of to the Jove what the Jove are to us. Um, but there's other ones as well too, uh, and it would be always interesting. We've, like Seagull has talked about um, uh, for quite a while now, the long-term vision. We still really want to uh, allow uh, people to create their own connection to a new type of space, and it would be awesome if that came with uh, some kind of a new set of ships. The uh, the kind of technical side of it is that it would be a shit ton of work um, to do all at once. Um, and so we tend to lean towards releasing ships that um, we can release piecemeal because if we if it takes us like uh, three weeks per ship uh, and we need to make like 90 ships, um, then it would be better to just kind of make ships that we could release piecemeal instead of having to wait to the end in a lot of ways. Uh, but there may be ways to do a race that doesn't have the full set of ships, which would probably have to be the way we do it. Thank you. Hey, my name is Grayscale, Wormel, uh, Corp. Um, we used to always live in our nice cozy bosses with uh, ship maintenance arrays. Um, from all our accounts we have access to our ships. So with the new citadels uh, we're kind of limited uh, with accessing that from uh, multiple characters. We have to use a delivery system or trays. Or, are there any ideas on the board maybe of like shared hangars inside citadels so we can still access our stuff? Um, yeah, well, I mean, the, the ship maintenance array functionality directly can be replicated with corp hangers, but obviously that's, you can't have as many, them segmented as much as the ship maintenance array. Um, the, uh, it would be really cool someday to add a, a um, like an inventory space that is connected to an ACL, so you can uh, connect it even across corps. Um, but that's, we've brought it up a couple of times and we're still not entirely sure how, how big the technical problems would be, but it's something we're definitely interested in. Um, but yeah, uh, I'd say, um, I also, I'd, I'd also really like to see us expand the number of core hanger uh, tabs at some point, which would also partly help with that. Um, but that is also one that we use kind of pulling a, a pretty old thread in Eve, so we have to be kind of careful. Um, but that is something we'd potentially like to do someday. Yeah, just avoid uh, the like, selection of, uh, hey, uh, these characters can access these hangers, or like, want to share them. Yeah, that would be like an ACL connected container of some kind. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's, just, it's really a small question that came up to my mind when I heard uh, this stuff uh, from what Jack and Whitebanks asked. Are there any plans to hire the cargo in the Manu ship? Because it's really hard to open ciders on that one. 
Yeah, so, <laughs> which I'm great about it, and it's really a pain because one of my Sino characters is Amara, and I have to import images from GDA just to open Sino. So, um, this question is a lot. <laughs> What I said the last couple of times is that we're probably going to fix this problem, but probably in a different way. Um, and I mean, the, the less sort of uh, hand wavy uh, way of answering that is to say, um, we're, we're investigating options for rebalancing what are now called Corvettes. Uh, we renamed the rookie ships because rookie ship is a terrible name. I don't know why we used that for so long. Corvettes is so much better. Um, we, and you know, rebalance the ships as a whole. The, those would probably, those balance chains we're looking at right now probably make uh, the concept of them at that power level uh, and at that kind of hit point level and also being able to be easily used to Sino ships and free uh, incompatible. So we actually are investigating the option of disabling Sinos on uh, the uh, Corvettes. Um, I can't talk about that. That would be Anyways, uh, it wouldn't matter anymore. I get to stop hearing that question. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Sergeant Warlock from 30 Plus or AFCON. And I have a question uh, concerning standings. If you're in uh, MALSEC or LOSEC, you can set standings, and uh, a corporation will not be able to dock in the station. But if you have a low standing and high sec, you're allowed to do everything. So will there be, is that a flaw, or is that just something uh, that is about to get active? So you're talking about MPC stations in this case. Yeah. Um, so standings, so I think we're, so I'm trying to kind of uh, work through the question. The, uh, at the moment, the places where docking, or standings uh, affect your docking access are player stations, so like the null sec uh, outposts are comparable to the control by players. Uh, and factual warfare stations specifically in low sec. Um, but other stations, so for instance, the true MPC stations in all sec, non factual warfare stations in low sec, and all the stations in high sec, none of them care about your standings for docking. Um, so it's it's not quite as simple as, like, say, as low sec and null sec block it, but high sec doesn't. It's just um, we, don't, uh, we don't block it anywhere other than player stations and FW stations. The uh, the concern with blocking it in more places, although it would be great from a immersion perspective, like, hey, why can you dock at this at this like Blood Raider station when you've been murdering them in the belts and in the Enoms all the time? Like, it's like, hey, welcome back, here's your pity service. Um, <laughs> that's, that's a little bit odd, but also, standings are a mechanic in EVE that are, it's a little bit creaky, and it's a system that is easy to get yourself into a situation where if we made it matter more, you'd be biting yourself in the ass without realizing it. Um, so I think we would need to do a pretty big rework of standings before we made them matter that, to that degree, because that would be a pretty big deal if we blocked uh, that kind of access. This would also make uh, the trade-offs a little bit more dispersed, and not everyone going to one place. It would, but it also could potentially just lead to people having to jump through a bunch of hoops to keep have all their trade-offs that uh, have positive standards to cover, and potentially just push more mission runners all into cover our space instead of the people that would rather just run missions for Glendon or Pivotar or Mar or whatever. Well, thank you. <coughs> well, hello there. Um, I had, well, technically, four questions right now. One was, why were Cofets called Cofets? Because they used to be called Snoop Shit. Um, so we renamed them uh, largely because the, the ship name Rookie Ship does not make you feel like an epic space captain. Um, and this is a video game where you're all epic space captains, so you should kind of feel like it. Like you're, you're like the rock star gods of a, a sci-fi murder universe, and that should be, that should be recognizable right away. Um, and uh, Rookie Ship just seemed like, like, who would name their actual like, line of ships Rookie Ships? Like, Imagine a navy, like, here's our rookie ships. Um, so it was a functional name, uh, but it was not a name that, uh, that really gave us the feeling we wanted. And that's something where actually Eve's made a bunch of mistakes over the years, and I've, been, I've made some of those mistakes too, of, of underestimating how much naming things can have an effect, and how much, how much that can kind of affect the feeling. And we just need to do a better job of it, and this is one of the steps forward in doing a better job of it. Okay. 
Um, second question, like I heard just recent, like a few seconds ago, like um, aren't Alpha clones limited to actually using a sign on? Uh, alpha clones are not allowed to activate sign yes, that's correct. Why wouldn't you actually allow them to be using Corvettes, though? Like, if, let's say, um, hypothetically, you are not allowed, allowed to use them on a Corvette, like you would have to buy a ship, let's say you're not allowed to use the market, which is going to create a whole new problem in itself. So, alpha, I'm, uh, it's, they're not really connected. The, um, the alpha clone restriction uh, prevents you from lighting a sign on any ship, that's just a if while you're in alpha uh, state, um, the actually I think it's just done by having the sinusoidal field theory skill, not the active. So you don't, you don't have the active sinusoidal field theory skill. Um, and then the the limitation, the potential limitation on sinos on Corvettes would be tied to experienced players using them. And we, we one of the things we were looking at doing is upping their hit points quite a bit and, and turning them into a bit more tanky, a bit slower ships, which kind of fits. It's in a lot of ways it's sort of kind of digressing quickly. Uh, it's in a lot of ways sort of weird that we send new players into the hardest to fly type of ship in the game right away. It's like, here, have, you're gonna like die if you don't turn to keep your transversal upright. Um, so we, one of the things we're thinking of doing is shifting them to be more, um, okay, a bit of a beefier, but also slower, and potentially even like limited in some other ways to uh, keeping it out of control type of ship. And then that would mean that it would be a bit too strong on So uh, one of the things we're looking at is blocking Everyone, including experienced players, using sinos on the Corvettes and making them buy Tech One trains. You can't actually move if you're using a sino. Yeah, yeah, I know, but it's the, the the it's the the movement restrictions would be around the other balance of the having the extra endpoints. Okay, fair enough. Um, also, I have a third question, which is <laughs> which is gonna be the last one. <laughs> Concord again. Concord. So my question is related to the Indian Braxo question from earlier, kinda. Which, by the way, I'm happy it's gone, and I think it can burn in hell. Uh, so, what are your thoughts on implementing the various tools that uh, third-party developers have made for Eve into the base into the game itself, ignoring any development constraints, because by doing that, you would uh, those tools would be made available to everyone instead of just the people that can afford to develop and deploy those tools. There's that there's a quote that I referenced in one of the slides earlier. I wrote the beginning part of it. Uh, it's kind of made famous by Steve Jobs: "The good artists borrow, great artists steal." Uh, we'd love to steal good ideas from the uh, third-party community. Because they, they have great tested concepts for what kind of tools are useful for players. Um, so that's, I mean, the big example of that is the uh, uh, fitting simulation, uh, formerly known as Ghost Fitting, the new fitting window. Um, it doesn't do everything that EFT and Python and Osmium do, but it does 